Take one. It's an intro. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Cross from the Couch with glasses and the beard and the mo. Here in America, riding cyclocross, explain. So we're riding cyclocross, you just explained it for a second. There's nothing to explain. What is it? Um, what are you doing? Alrighty, so we're here for two months. Um, we're racing our cyclocross bikes in like parks and all that. Everyone pretty much knows what cyclocross is. Um, and yeah, we're hanging around with Scott Deaton back here and he's looking after us. We're out in the yard now. It's getting colder, but we haven't seen any snow, so a bit of a disappointment. How many courses have you ridden? Ooh, it's got to be... Uh... Or just list them off. List all the courses that we've ridden this year. I think there were seven or eight. Rochester, under Trek, Jingle Cross, KMC, New Charm City. Baltimore. We went to Cleveland, we uh, did not get to race to Vue, but spent plenty of time there. And then Kings, got to race the last ever race at Kings. Uh, Finished up at Louisville. Louisville. <laughs> You Derby City. And we came back from you yesterday. wouldn't believe it, you know. We're, we're only two days into the <laughs> into the off season. Into the off season, I've forgotten the last race. Okay, if you had to pick your favorite course of all that ones you just listed, what would be your favorite? Alrighty. Um, so for me, I, I reckon the the Jingle Cross course was probably one of the best. Mm. But I reckon the funnest one I had riding around was actually Cleveland. It was. Good straight bits and nice and up and down a hill. We'll, um, I don't know, I'll put something in there so you can see the video of it to see the course. That was probably my favourite. Yeah, I was also a massive fan of Jingle Cross. Um, but I think the one that tops it is Louisville. I saw, I saw a lot of footage before we came on the trip and I was expecting a certain sort of vibe and it was completely different. It was powdery dust and uh, flowy, technical, sandy. Um, just good vibes there. I, I think that was my favorite for sure. What, and each one answer this, what lessons have you learned while you've been over here getting your cross on? Alrighty, so lessons I've learned. So the main thing for me to learn, I guess, would be as far as preparation prior to the race. So that would include like the warm up and the making a plan of what's going on and just so that you got some sort of structure before you rock up to the race. So that's probably the one thing I've really learned a lot of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, yeah, very, very similar to That's Chris, a good so. answer because you kind of both have learned that, right? That's yeah, like yeah, something definitely. you both have improved. Yeah, so that's something that, like riding for the same team back home, um, we all sort of copy each other to a certain point. Um, but then coming over here, hanging out with pros, and uh, people from the US scene, you learn a lot more. So Chris and I probably both picked up on that equally as much. Um, and the other thing would just be um, general bike skills. Riding your cross bike every day for two months is not something I've done before. And so um, general bike skills and, uh, and race tactics as well. Starting from middle of the pack at almost every race, you have to race it very differently to back home. So. Um, that's something I'll, I look forward to putting into now, practice. Now, we were talking about this a little bit yesterday, and one of the things I think you both mentioned was, like, speed into turns. Mm. Right? That's kind of at a, that's one of the things that's kind of at another level from what you're used to. Yeah. Correct? Oh, yeah. for sure. Uh, first race at Rochester was a, um, a real reality check on how fast you can actually ride your cyclocross bike. <laughs> I've never sprinted out of every corner on, in a lap before and coming in thinking I was going to crash and I was racing mid-pack at that point. So that was a very quick lesson learned. Um, the speed here is ridiculous and everyone sprints for every position. Even if it's like 20th or 30th? Yeah, so yeah. it, keeps, it keeps you very honest. You're having a battle no matter where you are in the field, which also keeps you motivated. So, yeah. So what things will you take home to Australia that you like tell everybody over there that you want to uh, either implement over there or bring back when you come back? Uh, so some of it would just be as far as structure for a team, I guess. Just like little things, nothing major, just you know, things to make your life easier when you get to a race. That'd probably be my big thing I'd like to bring back and also just how 
um, like for our local scenes, just how they run the events and certain bits and pieces. Like there's so many bits and pieces to talk about that it wouldn't fit into an hour long conversation. So yeah, yeah, it's just all these tiny little bits of how things are run and work and sort of like almost, I guess, shortcuts for people if they want to start an event or something that yeah, we could try and help out with some experience, I guess. Yeah. You want to add anything? Um, no, I think Chris has pretty well wrapped it up there. Now, one of the things that um, we see in all the videos you've been making is the cross community here in the U.S. I think the videos are good for helping get a flavor of that. How's the U.S. cross community been? Um, and is it similar or different than what Australia has? Uh, yeah, we've really enjoyed it. I know Chris and I, um, getting to race a high level of cross in an English speaking country is a massive advantage and it's something um, you can relate with the people who want to come and chat to you and uh, they're excited that we've we've traveled here and uh, just like the just the positivity of everyone wanting to grow the sport as a whole so whether they're fans or team managers or riders everyone wants progression and that's really cool to see just seeing that um, they're already a long way in front of what Australia is at at the moment and they want to get bigger and better so um that's awesome to see. There's plenty of heckling, which we get at home as well. Um, yes. But that's all a part of it and it keeps it fun. Um, okay, so I'm sure you've had lots of great moments and lots of laughs. What is the best or funniest moment that you've had while you've been here? Okay, for me? On or off the course? <laughs> I know what it's gonna be. For me, it's definitely off the course. Um, we arrived back from, I think it was Jingle Cross, I believe it was. Um, and it was Scott, Tom, myself, and also another guy called Jeff, who was uh, mechanicing for us there. And we got home, started to unpack. Jeff parked his car here. We're obviously on some property. And he went to leave, and his car was in limp mode and couldn't work out what was going on. So anyway, we said, pop the bonnet, jumps out, walks around, goes to lift up the bonnet, opens it up, and there's a woodchuck inside his engine bay, just like having a nap. <laughs> Just and a, and a snack on his wires. Yeah, and <laughs> just ate through some of his wires, so hence why his car wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> just... Get out of my engine bay! <laughs> oh yeah, I do see him. He's not going to be happy you just took him for a ride. I don't know, he needs to get out of there. <laughs> and um, yeah, just the Jeff's reaction was absolutely hilarious would be the way to put it oh man um, there's an animal in the, after, in the engine <laughs> yeah after was, a long day of driving and then he also had to drive a couple hours from yeah, here two hour drive so that was a bit rough for him <laughs> sorry jeff but but man, it was the it was funny <laughs> it was really funny we were lying on the ground laughing it was that funny hey anyway. tom Whew. under the pump now it's hard to beat that one it is the, the woodchuck moment Ah, uh, I think any time you're hanging out with Dave Oshiko is a <laughs> yes. entertaining time. Oh, From man. slamming a minivan into a mud pit that he was pretty sure he could just cruise a on through. A rented minivan as well, <laughs> not his own, yeah. a rental. But the best thing is is that um, his, his view on rentals is similar to mine and it's not your car so you have fun with it, which is rad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, limiter bashing it in neutral until the uh, oil light came on. That was good. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm struggling for that individual moments. That whole week moments, with him was good. <laughs> yeah. It was just, that yeah. was quality. All right, now, and I mean, anytime you're staying for this amount of time, there's also like low points. What was like, did you hit like a low point where you're just like, damn, this is hard? Or like just a low point in general? I know you had some issues with your back, so. Mm. Yeah, I think. Um, to be honest, the only sort of down moments I had this whole trip were um, probably with my back and um, spirits were quickly lifted by the, the company that I was keeping. Um, the team, uh, yourself, Scott, Chris in general, um, it was very easy to look forward to the next weekend and, uh, and just keep enjoying time on the bike. So they were the lowest moments for me, just like just really struggling in races and then um, and then just sort of yeah, just sort of wishing that wasn't the case, but gobble gobble. Big ass family of turkeys. 
That's what you get with uh, cross on the couch there's, in there's the nature. More. There's like six <laughs> of them. <laughs> Stress. Like low points. Alrighty, my low point for me probably would have been a jingle cross, to be honest. Um, it was, we were meant to race three days, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We raced Friday night, it was muddy, and it was raining, and it was dark, and we didn't get home and get to bed till probably about nearly two o'clock in the morning, um, which is not ideal when you're racing at about four o'clock in the afternoon for a World Cup the next day. So that was probably a low point for me because obviously you want to be arrested for a World Cup and it's quite hard. Um, and then after that World Cup that next day we didn't actually race on the Sunday that we were entered to race on um, just because we were so completely done and our backs were destroyed from riding the course and trying to ride hard. So that was probably a low point for me. Um, but you know, hanging around with everyone and everyone's so happy it was pretty cool because you could help out and it sort of brought your mood back up and you didn't really dwell on it too much so um, yeah that was probably the because like Tom said you have a lot of things that you got to do that like immediately lift you back up like yeah you're busy like you can't just sit there yeah. all right you guys want to say some thank yous to everybody who's been uh, helping you out while while you've been over here um, why don't you do that for sure um, I think first on the list is yourself Scott uh, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you and your hospitality and letting a year us hang of out planning as well. a year of planning as well well yeah. before last christmas we um we started getting things dialed and you've had us in your home with um your wife sean and it's been awesome super easy it's been a pleasure having you guys it's good times and uh and then of course the women's cx project who um have us in the tent each and every weekend using tools using trainers using bike stands and just generally being in their little community which um helps pass the time and makes race day easy so um thank you thank you to everyone from there Corey especially um the other the other manager of the women's cx project of course he had to have the approval that me and chris were going to hang out as well so um thanks very much Corey, and also organizing um for your in-laws to have us over at their house for a week um the hospitality and friendliness of everyone over here has been rad so the mechanics the mechanic work um Chris and I have got like a fairly good idea on our bikes, but of course race day, um, you know, when things hit the fan and it's only an hour to go, you need help. And um, we've had that support all the way through here. And uh, yeah, I'll let you. Yeah, so then also with that, um, there's Dave and Amanda who we met when we're in, um, well, we met throughout the weeks, but then we actually stayed with them at Corey's in-law's house. Uh, the week so Dave and Amanda big thank you to you um, you have showed us a lot and uh, we'll definitely take back a lot that we've learnt back home and implement it into our racing and just everyday life um, with that as well we've also got our sponsors so we've got Focus and Attacker um, then we've also got Cask, Zip, Shram, Challenge Tyres, uh, Sponsor Sport Food whole heap of other minor sponsors in there uh, thanks again to JB, JB Hancock, uh, promoter of the Alma GP race. Having us there for a weekend again, I know you had a super busy schedule and um, there's always always time, good times to be had with you, man. So thanks again. The hospitality last year, that want us, made us want to come back to the US and then uh, hanging out and riding with us and uh, the constant support, so thank you. Bill Shiken for having us on CX Hairs Radio. That was yeah. rad. Um, <laughs> while we were in DC, um, you made sure that we were able to meet up with you at your home and uh, hang out for a while, give us a hot tip of where to, what to see in Washington DC as well. And um, I know Chris and I got a lot of publicity out of that and a lot of fun doing it as well. So thanks again for all your efforts. Uh, with that as well, um, thanks to Lionhearts for having us whilst we are at uh, King's. Uh, that was very much appreciated where we got to help out with the I guess coaching of the, the young up and coming riders. Great to see all the little riders out there having fun and just loving riding their bike and not having to worry about everything else. So that was really cool. Thank you for having us and letting us come visit and join in on your training session. And then lastly would be uh, our family as well. So obviously our parents, our girlfriends, um, Alice and Tia, and just everyone else, family, friends, I guess. Um, all the support from back home has been much appreciated. We see all the comments and um, yeah, it's definitely been a, a good trip. That's yeah. Yeah. Couldn't have asked for anything else. All right, guys. Cheers to Yo. a successful 
two months, eight weeks. How many races? 18,000? Something roughly like that. About right. 18 cups of rice. Success! It's been a pleasure. Cross on the couch. That's right. Tune in next week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next year.